All right, so you got Finix on your radar. Not a bad choice, but I'd like to get into some of the details of what this pan is about and how it compares. First off, there's a lot going on in this pan and I'm a bit of a purist, so I don't know if a lot of that's going on in this pan really needs to be going on in this pan. So for instance, they have a hexagonal design, which looks cool. So as you can see, it's really hard for them to finish the interior. So you have this kind of half finished interior where you've got a you know low quality lodge style rough finish, and then you've got you know an okay polished surface. Um, so you've got a kind of a weird kind of hybrid. Does it really matter? Uh, you know, personally, I think you're gonna get a lot of crud built up in the seam around the edges, which, you know, to me, that's problematic. That's just more labor and maintenance than I need. So, you know, I, I'm a little bit worried about that off the bat, even before I start using the pan. So the handle helper, it may just be there for uh, looks because it's really quite tiny. Uh, it's the same as on some other pans, but this pan is actually quite substantial in its weight. So a larger handle helper would actually probably be quite good. If you were cooking something, say on the back of your cooktop and you wanted to pull it and pull it forward. So I also don't mind the handle. It's really well put together. It's a beautifully done piece. It's a bit much, like I don't know if it's really needed. Um, you know, putting a, a tea towel or a leather sleeve over it seems to work quite well for a lot of, of handles. Um, but the, the spun stainless with the brass end, um, it just seems like a little bit of addition to weight that really isn't gonna add to the quality of the pan. So that being said, let's look at the weight of this pan compared to a Stargazer 10 inch and a Field 10 inch. All right, so a Field 10 inch. You've got on there at 4.46 pounds. We've got a Stargazer going on for 5.53 pounds. And you've got the Phoenix at 6.21 pounds. So considerably heavier than the field for sure. Um, but it'd be interesting to know, you know, if I were to cut the handle off and weigh it separately, how much of this is actually in the handle. Okay, so we've got some comparisons here. We've got the Phoenix, we've got the Stargazer, and we have the Field. So when you compare them head to head, you've got a similar cooking surface, the hexagonal definitely makes it a little bit smaller overall. I find that the volume on the Stargazer is very generous. Uh, we've got a nice depth to it, uh, and overall the volume while you're using it practically seems really great. Where these two pans, just visually, this guy looks smaller. So what I'm gonna do is do a, a liquid volume weight and we'll see actually which one is actually gonna hold more volume. Because when we compare it to the field, it is a little bit more comparable looking, um, but again, you've got the hexagonal shape that's gonna lose a little bit of that capacity. But let's get some liquid in there and see who holds the most. Okay, so water test. We've got two and a half liters of water here. So going into the field, one liter. Two liters. Okay, so the field is two liters. Okay, going into the Stargazer. So, one liter. Hmm. Two liters. Actually, yeah, 
So two and a quarter liters. So it looks bigger than it is. It's actually the field in, and the stargazer are quite close. So there we go. Okay, the Phoenix. One liter. Okay, so there's over a cup left in there. So 300 mils. So 1.7 liters. So smaller than the Stargazer and the Field. Okay, so I've used a Field and I've used a Stargazer extensively. I have pretty deep relationships with both of these pans now. And I've got to tell you that I'm really heavily biased towards these because of how much I've enjoyed using them. They are both a little bit different. I love the difference in the, the, the weight between them and the, the type of heat transfer that you get from both of them. They, they are quite different pans. So both of these have space in my kitchen. And I'm always open-minded to new cookware in my kitchen. Trust me, I, I love a new pan. Uh, it's, a, it's a ton of fun. I explore all the different things it can do and I love putting them to the test. So I'm always very open to something new, even though I've got pans that are extraordinarily high quality and very, very tested to be really the best quality on the market. So I'm very open to this Phoenix pan. I'm, I'm hesitant in some of the things in which we've already gone over here, the volume to weight. I'm, I'm a huge advocate of weighty cookware. Weight is quality, but there is going to be that tipping point where you've just got an excess weight and you're not getting the quality in return. Am I gonna see the weight difference between these two pans? Um, that's to be seen. So the next thing to do is to put this to the test. So I'm going to, over the next month, try cooking many different things. I've done head-to-head -head tests here on the stove and cooked you know, onions and simple foods. And that has its certain results, but it's really only just one test. So my pans at home are very, very used and very worked in and broken in, and I've gotten to know them over time. So I'm gonna do the same thing with this Phoenix, is that I'm going to give it a really good test. I'm gonna use it thoroughly for a month, make it my primary pan, unless I've got something that I need my number 12 Stargazer for. Uh, I will do everything that I usually do at home and I will document that and then I will report back and let you know what I think. So I've been able to play around now with this pan for a bit and uh, so today I'm just going to cook up a few simple things in the kitchen to show you but uh, I've used this pan extensively for a lot of different things uh, and so far so good. So I'm going to do basic pan fried chickpeas. Uh, something that I'm really impressed by with this pan so far is that the non-stickability of the pan is outrageous. Like, it, it just doesn't want to stick. It's, you know, I, I as you know, I've said, I'm biased towards the uh, Stargazer and the, the field, but out of the box, this is an extraordinarily non-stick pan. So it's done a, a great job here at the chickpeas and I'm throwing on my salad and I'm, I'm really happy. So let's take it over to the sink and, uh, and give it a clean. For the most part, I put my cast iron under you know, warmish running water. Uh, the steaming of that initially lifts quite a lot of whatever is on there, unless they've got something seriously burnt on, but just regular cooking like I was doing with these chickpeas, a little bit of running water, I'm using a 10 millimeter round chainmail scrubby with a silicone on the inside and really easy to hold and to scrub and it works brilliantly well. The round of the chainmail does not take the seasoning off unless I really, really, really put effort into it, but it will just take whatever's cooked on there off easily and it works brilliantly well. So well done, seasoning still intact uh, and this pan is ready to go. Okay, so moving on. A uh, little bit of grapeseed oil. I always start cooking with grapeseed oil. Once in a while, it will finish with uh, olive oil, but I start with grapeseed oil. Um, and I'm going to just pan fry some potatoes. My intention here is to end up in the oven, um, but my starting desire is to see if I can get some browning and some color 
from the stovetop. Uh, I, I you know, don't know if it really matters or not. Really, if I'm doing this normally, I just put them straight into the oven, but I just really wanted to put some pressure on the pan. So I'm dropping them here into the oven and I'm gonna finish them off. So they've been in for maybe a good hour or so and looking really, really, really nice. Another thing that I find is is just absolutely awesome with this pan, like I said before, the non-stick ability. So they've been roasting away here, getting really nice color, and just just no sticking whatsoever. So I'm I'm starting to get quite impressed with this pan. So moving into just doing some straight onions, I find brining onions is something that every pan should do well. So you know, just absolutely basic uh, onions with some salt and some garlic. Uh, and I find, you know, absolutely, it browns the onions just perfectly, cooks through really, really, really nicely. I usually add quite a bit of water to my onions as I go. Uh, I found I used a lot less water because it just, the, the pan surface wasn't getting so searing hot. The, the evenness and the consistency to the heat coming through at a medium heat was just so good. So it, it browned really nicely without starting to dry and burn. So I was really really impressed on how well it cooked. The caveat to that is that all of these things are taking much longer than I would on a, a bit of a lighter pan. Uh, the weight is advantageous to the end result, but the time it takes to get there is pretty intense. So it's I'm absorbing quite a lot of time in just kind of making it a simple meal. So, you know, keep that in mind from median heat cut cooking. So I've done my onions. I'm going to quickly just go over to the sink, give it a, a, a quick rinse and just show you how kind of how simple it is to maintain a piece like this. What I haven't been showing you here is that I would, after scouring down like so, I would take it back to the stove top, put a bit of grape seed oil on and cook that on as a, as a post seasoning. I'd actually use not grape seed oil uh, per se, I would use grape seed in beeswax uh, as our cook culture paste and that's what I use for post seasoning whenever I'm cooking. So I've done this process of scouring with a, a chainmail scrubby and just gotten the carbon and the food off and then I'll take that and dry it on the stove top. Okay, so I've done enough testing with the Phoenix pan to get a good feel for it so that I, I know comparatively between the stargazer and the field that I've used extensively. Uh, I have the number 10, the number eight, the 10 inch and the 12 inch all at home in the stargazer in the field. I use them all the time. Uh, I know them inside and out. So I, I know what I expect from the performance of those and putting up against the Phoenix, I'm really, really impressed with this pan. So, you know, to me, it fits in this series extraordinarily well. Uh, it's a heavy, heavy pan and you get the sense of that as you're using it. Everything happens in slow motion. Uh, nothing is happening too quickly. Things are browning just ever so slightly. You know, I'm sure if you crank the heat, you can get things up and do, you know, a heavy sear or, you know, fast browning. But the, you know, I was cooking under a medium heat all the time and things were just happening so perfectly slowly that the, the, the result of everything I was cooking was tremendous. So, you know, I did the in the oven cooking with the potatoes and the lid, started them on the stove top, um, just for the fun of it, didn't have to, I could have just put them raw into the oven. Um, but the, you know, the lid works incredibly well, it fits nicely. Uh, the field comes with lids, they work incredibly well also. Stargazer lids are coming, but not available as of October, 2021. Um, so lids for these guys and the lids are an excellent option. Uh, so I highly suggest going for a, for a lid, uh, even though the lids are, are premium. You know, lids really, unfortunately, take as much effort and energy in the foundry as doing a pan. So they're, they're not inexpensive. You know, this pan comes together as an option uh, and it's a, it's a premium pan. Uh, and talking about price, the Phoenix is the most expensive out of these three by you know 20 percent or more uh, so you know it's a it's a premium dollar there's a lot of time and effort as you can see that's put into this pan into the shape and the finish and the design which 
Is that necessary? I don't really think so. You know, this octagonal shape didn't benefit me at all when I was cooking in, in any way. This is actually a smaller pan as we looked at at the beginning of this video. So, you know, the, the 10 here is a little bit limiting. I would go larger and then you're into even a higher expense just to compare to a number eight or the 10 inch in the Stargazer. So, you know, when it comes to the pricing and what you get for your money, that's where it gets a little bit hard to justify. You know, I don't love that price. However, if price just is not a consideration at all, this is a really, really nice pan. I, I enjoy it. Uh, it, it. The way in which it cooked was beautiful. I did enjoy the coolness to the handle at grab because like, I just kind of got it. However, in this pan, this is kind of a shorter handle, like all well, cast iron, except for maybe the Stargazer has a wonderfully long handle. Um, but the, the, the lower part of the handle and also the end, the brass knob, both got quite hot over time. So when I grabbed it, I had to be really careful where I grabbed it. If I went too far back or too far forward, I was burning myself quickly after about 10 minutes on the stovetop. Not a big deal, but just, you know, something to be aware of. But it did work quite well. And so, you know, overall, I would definitely recommend this pan to anybody that's considering it. Um, just with, you know, understanding that it's not the perfect pan. There, maybe there isn't a perfect pan, um, but you know, the, I find the size limitation, the weight for some people is gonna be a major consideration. I don't love the way in which that it's been finished on the inside, that it's got this ridge around because it's unfinished around the hexagonal and it's just finished on the inside. However, that didn't change the way which it worked for me at all. I found the non-stickability of this pan out of the box was pretty extraordinary. So very happy with how it worked right away. I, I really, I, you know, I did a bit of post seasoning uh, at the beginning and it, it's just basically been releasing, releasing, releasing with everything I did. Uh, you know, when I caramelized the, the chickpeas, there was some sticking of course, because of the sugars, but the cleanup was brilliant. Super, super simple, using chain mail on here. It hasn't degraded the, the, the non-stick finish that it comes from the factory with. Um, you know, so overall, I think this is an absolute buy and I highly recommend it. Um, so, you know, it fits in as I highly recommend the field that is a much lighter pan. So for those people, you know, like this guy, and you may have seen me struggling with the lid to get that into the oven with the potatoes. It's really heavy with the lid on, really heavy. Like one hand is, is tough. You know, with a field, even with lid on, is super manageable. Um, you can chuck this around in the kitchen. It's, it's a fantastic workhorse for somebody that really likes to work and move their pans. They come with a leather handle holder uh, and that really, really, really helps. So that for somebody who really wants to move the pan around. So a lot of weight to the Phoenix. And then the Stargazer, you know, fits in so nicely in between and has this huge handle helper, which really, really benefits using this pan in the kitchen. So. Um, overall, super happy. Phoenix fits in. Maybe something that you'll be seeing on the shelves at Cook Culture in the near future. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm.